So let me talk maybe about four minutes just to set up this, this uh, seminar. And then, whether you believe it or not, we are going to get all the way to page 65 before we leave. And we're going to do it, I believe we could do it in probably an hour and a half, all right? But just to set it up, it's a ble this is the way I like to do camp meetings. Thank you for letting me be a part of your camp meeting here. Um, and more and more congregations are doing camp meeting this way. And so uh, it, it's, it's a joy, it's an honor. It's an honor for me to be here also with colleagues in ministry. Of course, your pastor and my good friend, Greg Honus, also Pastor Jeff Park, and then the leader of our region, Elder Rick Wolfer. We share in a common ministry in the gospel of Jesus. The gospel of Jesus directs our lives, directs our activity, um, our hopes and our dreams, and our service for others. Third, I teach practical theology, and I'm learning more and more that the Apostle Paul, I myself, that we kind of do the things that Jesus asked us to do, and then our theology comes out of reflecting on what we have done. And so, the, the more you are active in doing and following as Jesus has called, the better your theological reflection will be. Uh, it's not something you kind of do, <coughs> list in a set of beliefs and say, oh, I believe those things, as if you get good at thinking theologically. You'll actually get better at thinking theologically when you get active in doing the work of of Christ, of God in the world. And so, so what I want to do, words of light, right, that's the theme. This seminar will help us to hear three words of light from God. It will help us to hear where, what, and how. Okay, so we're going to cut through the chase. When you do this, and so all of you now who are taking this, will be on a team when you finish. That team will replace your nominating committee. And that team will be an ongoing body of facilitating people into ministries where they are gifted and shaped to serve so that they will be fulfilled in ministry. So you're having this book. Uh, you're going to not only discover your spiritual gifts, your ministry passion, and your leadership style, but you'll now be a part of a team that will help this congregation facilitate its members to learn the same so you can be deployed in this area for the service of Christ. Now, once you finish, push Pastor Honus to go ahead and free up some of the budget to buy all of the, you know, this seminar is, this seminar is supposed to have a little video and it gets real fancy. I, I never go through all of that because I don't work good with multimedia. I don't multitask. Well, this is the best I have, all right? But I take my students through this and, and tell them now they need to do the same in their congregation. So let's turn to page one. What is connections? Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, rather serve one another in love. All right? In this session, you will identify the goal of connections, identify the process of connections, list two reasons for why we are to serve, and describe how we are to serve, namely our servant profile. This is chapter one. Let's see how fast we can get through it. Okay. All right, uh, we're going to, so when you have the fancy one, you'll put in a video, they'll watch the video, you'll introduce yourself to the group, tell why you've come to connection, and discuss your observations on the video. We, we aren't watching the video, but we're going to move over to page three, the goal of connections. Do you have your pen or your pencil? Our goal is to help believers be, here's the word, fruitful and fulfill, put that in, in a meaningful place of service. So the goal is to help believers be fruitful 
bear fruit, and fulfill it in a meaningful place of service. I like to tell people, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you are in a ministry and you feel a heavy burden and a hard yoke, it's probably not Jesus called for your life. Okay? So fulfillment in ministry is important, and we want to help that to happen. Again, you were called. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Look on page four. Motion without movement. It's when your spiritual gifts are sending you doing one thing, your ministry passion is sending you doing another, and your leadership style is sending you doing another thing. It's just kind of going in all kind of directions. Um, really, you can only move if you're a human in one direction at a time. And so connections helps us to make a mark where our passion in ministry our spiritual gifts for ministry and our personal style of ministry are all moving in the same direction toward target. We're not talking about the shopping center, all right? Um, or another way, sometimes we're like a pile of puzzle pieces and the ministries in our churches are all over, disconnected. Connections helps to put those pieces together both individually and as a body congregation. So our passions, our spiritual gifts, and our and our leadership style all come together. Let's look at page six. I told you we were going to move fast, right? Uh, connections will help you understand more of who God has made you to be, how making your unique contribution in a meaningful place of service will make a, and here's the phrase you want to put down, kingdom difference for eternity. Kingdom difference for eternity. Too often we do good at churchianity, but we don't do well at kingdom building. And real ministry, real fulfillment, and real fruit of ministry will be in building the kingdom of God. All right? So connections process. Here's the process. Step one, discover. Write that down. You learn more about your God-given your God-given shape. And that's what we're going to help you. Yeah, what is your God-given shape? Shape. Shape. I'm sorry. Let me see. With a P. Shape. Right? Form. Right? What is your God-given shape? And that's an important thing. Our style is, is a lot of, to do with our shape, our, our passion, and our gifts. Step two. Consultation. This is referral to ministry team. At the end of this seminar, when you're finished, you're gonna fill out a sheet of paper and tear it off, and we're gonna collect them, and then you're gonna set up a consultation where you can talk about what you've discovered about yourself, okay? A consultant assists you in finding a meaningful place of service, your ministry fit. Yeah, you're fit in this congregation. That's gonna be very helpful for you. Step three, service. The goal is service, right? That's the goal here, service. The goal is service. All right, page eight. Why are we, why we are to serve? The purpose for serving in the church is to glorify God edify others. That's your purpose for serving. To glorify God, to edify others. Edify others. To build each other up, right? Edify others. Yes, edify others. We see... Say that. It's all right. Slow me down if you need to. Yeah, edify. To build each other up. That's what... So we're going to give glory to God, but we're also going to nurture and build up each other. And uh, that word edify, that's what it means. We see this in many places in Scripture. Two key passages, the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, 1 to 17. I memorized that when I was a kid, but we aren't going to read it. Uh, but you know it, right? 
Um, the first four commandments describe how we are to glorify God. That's what you write down. Right? Glorify God. And the remaining six commandments describe how we are to love others. Someone, would someone read the great commandment right there from Matthew 22? Read it out loud for us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Amen. Thank you so much. So how does serving glorify God? Service is worship. That's what you put there. That's, service is worship. And worship glorifies God. The, 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 the biblical, language, biblical word for worship is literally a compound word. Laos, where we get the word laity or people. And ergon, where we get the word work. And we put it together and call it liturgy. Right? The work of the people. That's what worship is. It's the work of the people. And so service is worship. And worship glorifies God. Someone read 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 11. As my colleague Charles Till says, read it in round, pear shaped tones projecting from the diaphragm. <laughs> if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. Mm. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. How does serving edify others? Serving, and here's the words, builds up. Another way of saying meaning builds up gives esteem or value. It edifies the church, all right? So serving builds up. Someone, how about Ephesians? Someone read that for us. It was he who gave some to, to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Ah, thank you. Amen. Glorifying God and edifying each other is the major test of service. Think about that. When you are serving in the church, what are your reasons? Right? How are we to serve? Our servant profile. Our passion. You might want to put in a parenthesis right next to passion. Interest. You know, God wants to give us the desires of our heart. We're you interested in service. That's important. And your life story has helped to form a passion. Uh, your passion indicates where you are best suited to serve. You got that wear down? Here, I want everyone to sit, read this that follows. Ready? There, there is no right or wrong passion. So if people have passion in the ministry, that's all right. There's no right or wrong passion. Spiritual gifts. This is, you might want to put next to it, Competent service. Those spiritual gifts are where we serve competently. Spiritual gifts indicate what you do, you will do when you serve. Ah. Here again, I may have a passion for this. I may have a passion for music. But Greg felt, I, I, I mentioned, I'm on the cover of the albums that my family did. <laughs> but my brother said, Maury, sing as loud as you want. Your mic is dead. <laughs> passion, you might have a passion for something, but spiritual gifts indicate what you will do when you serve. And guess what happened at the end of the concerts? My, wife, my mic went live, and I began to make an invitation to come to Christ. Right? Spiritual gifts. <laughs> And guess what? Let's read it together. There are no right or wrong spiritual gifts. That's vitally important. We're edifying others and glorifying God. 
Personal style. This is really your personality. Personal style indicates how you will serve. So, again, we have different styles. Preachers have different styles of preaching. Um, servers have different styles of serving. Leaders have different styles of leadership. Let's read it together. There is no right or wrong personal style. So the goal of connections, helping you to be fruitful and fulfilled in a meaningful place of service. Con the connections process will help us reach that goal through discovery, through consultation, through service. Why we are to serve, glorify God and edify others. How we are to serve, we're to serve according to our servant profile. That will tell us what are our passions, where are our spiritual gifts, and our personal style. Guess what? We finished lesson one. Uh, all right. All right. We have the gift of speediness. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Lesson number two. There's this wonderful passage, Psalm 37, 3 to 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. So, in this session, you will define passion and list its three key characteristics. Complete the passion assessment. You're going to take an assessment and discover what your passion is. Identify one or more possible passion areas and then gain a clearer understanding of your passion. All right, that's page 14. Characteristics. Passion is, write this in, god given Passion is God given. Let's say this together. There is no right or wrong passion. Passion answers the where question. The where question. Here's a definition. Passion is the God given desire that compels us to make a difference in a particular ministry. Other words used for passion are dream, purpose, vision, burden, or call. There again, that, pa that passage I read, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land, and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. Or look what Paul said, but God in his grace chose me even before I was born, and called me to serve him. And when he decided to reveal his son to me so that I might preach the good news about him to the Gentiles, I did not go to anyone for advice. So an important part of discovering your servant profile is understanding your passion. When you have a passion for an area of ministry, you are more enthusiastic, and motivated to serve. So now you're about to do an exercise individually, okay? Prayerfully, now here's, let's follow these instructions. Prayerfully, consider your answers to the questions. This is when I hope you all are going to say, are there any more quotes? And then we're gonna say, we came up short. Because this is where you can't share. You're gonna be writing your own answers, all right? Prayerfully consider your answers to the question. Complete the assessment on your own. Watch this. Th Let's read this number three together. <laughs> there are no right or wrong responses. Okay? Don't be concerned. Now, this is key. Don't be concerned about whether you can do it or how it can be done. Don't even let those get into the way of your dreaming. <clears throat> Just complete the assessment as if you have no obstacles to fulfilling your heart's desire. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll give you. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, your turn. <laughs> Play it from your phone. <laughs> 
You have a few questions there, and so go ahead and feel free. Work it out. There's a scene. That ten. Ten questions you're going to respond to. Oh, you have one that has answers in it. I'll bring it right to you. This is mine. It's big block letters. We wow. have I am sorry. Okay. Or drop all my stuff No, you keep it. That just you looks so much better than this one. I just knew it was brand new. All right. Well, it was no help. Now, that is funny. <laughs> Here's your student's park. <laughs>
Don't get nervous, but I'm gonna do like I do in my class. I'm all around. I'm going to be vulnerable. If I just keep writing and ignore me. Uh, question one, if I could snap my fingers and know that I couldn't fail, what would I do? Can you believe I put lead a congregation? This was way back then. <laughs> oh, how about this one? Five to seven positive experiences. A, my baptism. I put that down, right? That was young when I did this. Now, B, holding the first week of prayer. Ah, uh, yeah. You all had different experiences, right? College, I put the employment and ministry. Hey, finishing a book, I actually put that down. Mm How many have got to uh, question nine yet?
Number six, the people I would like to help most, I think uh, Brother Pete Thornburg put young adults or something. I mean, uh, you, no. <laughs> Remember, there are no right or wrong answers. No call. Who hasn't got to number seven yet? How about number eight? Number nine? Okay. Right. We're almost there. <coughs> Once you get to number ten, we're almost finished with two or four. And then we're finished for the day after lesson. Now that I looked at it, we're going to get to 140 today. 
Why don't we turn to page 20? Just real quick, I'll go over this. Then I'll give us a stretch. And you can just finish writing those who, who haven't finished while we take the stretch. Let's just take a look real quick on page 20. Let's look at Ted and Sue, okay? So Ted, Ted, I have a passion for, Ted's passion is for children. Young, single parent family, and at risk. That's his passion. How about Sue? I have a passion for reaching the lost. All family and friends, neighborhood, co-workers, children. You see what happens there? And then you, I have a passion for, and you, after you've gone through this passion uh, assessment, you can answer something. I'll give you what my answer was. I, it was, it was a working answer, and you'll be having a working answer. That's all right. Mine said, culture. I have a passion for culture. And then I had religious, secular, international community. That was me at the time. Once you finish that, I want you to have a conversation with each other uh, about your passion, and then watch this. You'll circle that and go all the way you see at the bottom of page 21, it says, circle number two. Circle the idea that best reflects your passion, then transfer your passion to your servant profile on page 140 in your participants guide. I told you we'd get to 140. <laughs> All right, so just quickly finish up that, and then I want you to turn to each other when you're finished, and each person Take your shoulder, partner, explain your passion, discuss each other's passion, help each other get a clear understanding of their passion, and then use the worksheet to clarify phrases, okay? Why don't we, why don't we just finish, finish up and then do that? And when you do that, then stand up, take a stretch, give your shoulder partner a massage, and then turn around and let them give you one, all right? <laughs> There's water, lemonade, and hot coffee, and a little fruit in the kitchen if anybody wants to eat. That's my touch. <laughs> I already see a gift in <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm just telling you that when you're taking a break, there's... The gift of leadership and administration. Right. <laughs> and whoever made that, the gift of health is I bet. <laughs> Very good here. Very good. Because when we get this in Lancaster Church, we always have those differences. So that's what we're going to do.
Exactly, exactly. This has been a blessing. <laughs>
that the whole system is Yeah, but what is it you got it all? Projecting from the diaphragm. Taking it around. The round, the round pear shaped tone. All right, so we're going to push along. We're going to push ahead. We can uh, si se puede. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. So here we are, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, now this is, this is very important. Spiritual gifts. We're about to get there. We're about to get there. In this session... Um, are we moving under, are we moving too fast or are we good? Oh, oh page number 23. Yeah, let's, it's page number 23. Now we get back to um, here. Why can't you be more like me? So in this session, you will define spiritual gifts and list their three characteristics. We've already dealt with passion. Now we're going to deal with spiritual gifts. We're going to list the three elements of serving as a body in the church. Describe one step to take to become more interdependent. And identify two key points concerning diversity. That's important. Interdependence. Let me just say, well, I'll wait to Characteristics. Spiritual, this is page 24, spiritual gifts are, and here's what you put in, God-given. And guess what we're going to say together? <laughs> there are no right or wrong spiritual gifts. I want to keep driving that home. Spiritual gifts answer the what question. The what question. So whereas... Passion answers the where, spiritual gifts answers the what question. Spiritual gift definition. Spiritual gifts are, and here are special abilities. Spiritual gifts are divine endowments. They are abilities God has given to make to us to make our unique contribution. And you find that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Spiritual gifts are also distributed by the Holy Spirit. Spiritual gifts are given by God. He bestows spiritual gifts to us for meaningful service. Now, here's the question I heard my brother ask. They are special abilities distributed by the Holy Spirit to some believers? Every. Every, every believer. According to God's design and grace. According to God's design and and grace. Every believer has at least one spiritual gift. Every believer is a minister. One, one time I was doing the calculation of, of the temple in Jerusalem and then I realized it was no, not much bigger than the church I was pastoring and land pastor. And it dawned on me. The only people who went into the temple were priests. I stopped preaching to my members as anything but a congregation of priests from that day forward. We're all ministers. We're all ministers. For the common good of the body of Christ. So the spiritual gifts that God gives us allow us to serve one another better. A major test of our use of spiritual gifts is to glorify God and edify others. So God has carefully selected each believer's spiritual gift and place of service within the body. 
Our servant profiles are not of our choosing. They are by God's design. Let's look at those passages on page 20, 26. Someone read 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Someone read 1 Corinthians 12, 11. And someone 12, 18. They're right there on page 26. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To each one. All right. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one, just as He determines. Gives them to each one. But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as He wanted them to be. Amen. Right? So we have each been given a unique role to play. Each has been given a unique role to play. Each of us has a unique design. There is great diversity in the body. Our differences are by God's design. I'm going to read here 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 8 through 10. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, in distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Different gifts are imparted to different ones that the workers may feel their need of one another. God bestows these gifts, and they are employed in his service, not to glorify the possessor, not to uplift man, but to uplift the world's redeemer. They are to be used for the good of all mankind by representing the truth, not testifying to a falsehood. Let's turn to page 28. So, interdependence of believers. Look at that, that, that um, figure that we have, that diagram. Interdependence of believers in the church. Look what dependence looks like. One big circle, everybody huddled in. Look what independence looks like. I can always tell by the budget of the church how independent they are. You know, people giving to their pet projects and no combined budget, you know. <laughs> hey, how about this? Look what interdependence looks like. And interdependence is not codependence. You see, those three circles, those three figures. So you have dependence, you have independence. Culturally, we have equated maturity with independence. Maturity. My son, my oldest son, graduated at La Sierra on, in June. Boy, that I felt so good. I immediately tried to saddle him with debt. <laughs> and started moving him out. <laughs> oh, interdependent. God's design is that we serve like a body. Someone read Romans 12, 5 for us. So in Christ, we who are many form uh, one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Ah, amen. Mm -hmm. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of mm -hmm. Ah. So, little huddle group, here are the directions. Share with your group what keeps you personally from being more interdependent. So I want you to get in a small huddle group, two, no more than three. All right? Watch this. Identify one step you could take to become more interdependent. And then write your answers in the space provided. Look, can I, can I tell you what I wrote down? Not to, to impose your creativity, but to just make myself vulnerable. Uh, watch this. What keeps me from being more interdependent? When I was in a huddle group, you know what I discovered? It took me to name it. Lack of trust. 
I, you know, I didn't trust the other person to hold up there, and I was a terrible sports person, you know, kind of like Kobe Bryant. Don't, <laughs> don't trust anybody. I got to make the scores, right? <laughs> uh, what you got to ask what keeps you, you know, or some pride of being any fit, any fat. Sometimes we don't want to be in a defense because we think we're going to drop the ball, all right? Uh, so, Get in the huddle group and answer those questions together and write your answers in the space provided. All right? Two or three. All right, does someone want to share their two answers with the group? Be vulnerable like I was. <laughs> the, the fear of being vulnerable. <laughs> the fear of, of being vulnerable. Yeah, you don't want to open yourself up to people you're afraid. People will see something that you don't want them to see. Uh, and what's, what's the one step that you could take to become more into the and trust, trusting others yeah. in their grace. Ah, trust yes. Uh, yeah. so you could also be open about your feelings and, and improve our communication. Excellent step. Do you all hear what's happening right now? This is powerful. We're forming a really a, a, a we common time. Can we hear that last one? Can we hear that last one? You want to restate that? Yeah, going back to uh, being afraid of willing to commit, I think uh, we can be open about that fear and communicate that. Rituals of naming. Yeah. Not just to name it, to say, hey, this is where I am right now. And opening that communication space helps to form the entire group to, to, to understand this is sensitive to you and to help build you up, right? All right, so look here. Someone read 1 Corinthians 12, 20 and 21a and 25 to 26 right here. Somebody read it for us. As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The I cannot say to the hand, I don't mean you. So that there should be no division in the body that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Amen. Thank you so much. So we are all diverse, but we are called to serve without division. Right? Look at how they diagram 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. 
There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. The gift is different, but the spirit is the same. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Our service is different, areas of service, but the Lord is the same. Different kinds of workings, but the same God works all of them in all of us. So, different workings, but the same God. Uh, look at these passages in 1 Corinthians 12. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Unity is not achieved by being alike. Unity is achieved by having the same purpose. The same purpose. Thank you. And that is to glorify God and edify others. Guess what's happening both where at the summary to Session three, and so I'm going to read it. Here's the definition. Spiritual gifts are special abilities distributed by the Holy Spirit to some believers, right? Every believer. Ah, I wanted to make certain we name that. To every believer according to God's design and grace for the individual good, right? For the common good of the body of Christ. See there? Characteristic spiritual gifts are God given. There are no right or wrong spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts answer the what question. God has designed each part of the body to be in an interdependent relationship with all the other parts. All right, we're in our last session for today, session four. But just before I go there, let me just talk real briefly. So often we would do that. It's session four, and that's uh, page 35. That's where we're about to go to next. When, when we would go through this exercise uh, with leadership in our congregation, it was interesting some of the discoveries we found with some of our elders. One of our head elders, she was, she was co-head elder, and she was the the uh, wife of a retired principal, she knew how to do work that needed to be done. And she was the kind of leader that, guess what? If it wasn't getting done, she didn't delegate, she just did it. <laughs> but it was a discovery about her style and her gifts and her passion that made her realize why she was feeling some frustration being a head elder to organize and, and and uh, you know, give direction instead of doing all the work that she was doing. And that discovery helped her. And it helped her to ask questions about her own leadership style, how she would embody the role that she had with her passion and given the gift set that God had given to her. And that's gonna be, I think, something you'll find valuable uh, by the time we're finished next week. So we're almost, we're almost ready to go. What am I supposed to do? Now, you will finish this at different times because of your, um, no, we get to finish this together, I think. Yeah, that's good because, uh, yeah, you'll still finish it at different times because, but, but, so let me, let me do this to, to let you know, let me say something about how session four ends. Session four is going to ultimately end, not here, but it's going to end this week sometimes. So hold your finger on page 35. That's where, that's where we'll begin. Go all the way to page 66. Now, we're going to end at 66 today, but session four is not going to end 
until page 87, and you will do that this week. But let me tell you, it's not hard work because on page 66, you're going to see, and I'm going to tell you, now watch me, watch me. You see, take a look at my book. You see what happened in, in my book there? You see that, you see how that is perforated real nice and, right? And these tear out. Now I tell my students, what you have to do to tear them out, like, if you, do I have any jagged edges? You guys know I got the OCD problem. <laughs> right? Oh man, I, you gotta fold that nice, but it'll tear real slow and, and there will be three different observation assessments that you will, now, let me tell you, I'm telling you this now because when we get to the end, uh, you're gonna be able to go at your own pace. You're gonna give this to different people. I recommend you do this. You invite them over for a cup of tea. You staple it together. You tell them, I need you to fill out this observation assessment for me. And you don't let them leave until they finish. <laughs> and then you have one. And then you do the same with someone else. You don't have to be expensive. Maybe ice cream this time. <laughs> you know. But then say, come over. And then, I want you to fill this out. Don't get talking about a beat. Yeah, if you are, if you are people oriented, now you need to be task oriented. Let them finish that, and then you guys can fellowship. And then you do the third, and then next week you're going to bring these three back because that will be how you complete lesson four. All right. So keep that in mind. I'm going to, and what you make certain you do, don't have jagged edges, don't tear it out all messy. <laughs> but do real neat, okay? All right. Now that being said. Let's get to work. In this session, we're at page 35 again. In this session, you will, number one, list the spiritual gifts from the Bible passages provided. I don't think you all, maybe you haven't realized when we pull all of them together, uh, uh, it's, it's an indicative list of what is in the scripture, all right? exhaustive of what's in the scripture, but not exhaustive of what God can do in our lives. Uh, number two, match each spiritual gift with its corresponding characteristic. Number three, identify spiritual gifts in action. And number four, identify how spiritual gifts are affirmed. Are you ready for this? Page 36. Here are the directions. We're going to do this together. As each scripture passage is read, and each spiritual gift is identified. Write that spiritual gift in the space provided in your participant's guide. Now, listen to the second. A few of the spiritual gifts occur more than once, but you only need to write a spiritual gift down the first time it occurs in our reading. Okay? All right, let's get going. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. Look how it reads. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Write that down. That's one of the, we just got one of the spiritual gifts in Scripture. Wisdom. Through the Spirit. And to another, the word of... Write that down. According to the same Spirit. To another... Faith. By the same Spirit. And to another, gifts of... Healing by the one spirit. And to another, the effecting of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, the distinguishing of spirits. You can write in number seven, discernment. To another, various kinds of tongues. Write tongues there. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. So you can write interpretation. You see, we just identified nine biblical gifts. Are we ready to move on to the next one? First yeah. Corinthians chapter 12, verses 28. And God has appointed in the church first, apostles. number 10, apostleship. 
Second, now don't write prophets because guess what? On number six, we already listed the gift of prophecy, right? We don't need to list it twice. Second, prophets. Third, write down the gift of teaching. That's right. That's teaching. Then, I'll write down miracles. Remember, we've already done that. Helps. The gifts of healing helps, right? Helps on number 12. <coughs> administration. Write administration down. Number 13. And various kinds of tongues. All right? You see, we got that list. We, we're trying to get an exhaustive list of biblical naming of gifts. Now we have to go to another book in the Bible. In Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Look what it says. And since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let each exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, we already have listed prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. If service... Hey, uh, no. No, we have Helps. service. Helps is service. We have service already, right? If service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who, ah, exhorts, we can put encouragement or exhortation. In his exhortation. He who gives, there's a gift of giving. That's beautiful. With liberty, liberality. He who leads the gift of leadership with diligence. And he who shows mercy, the gift of mercy with cheerfulness. Did you know with cheerfulness? <laughs> Did you know that there were 17 different gifts listed in Scripture? Not only 17, it's called Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11. And he gave some as apostles. We already have that. And some as prophets. We have that one also. And some as evangelists. And some as pastors. Or we might put shepherds and teachers. So some as evangelism and shepherding to other gifts. That's 19. Now, note the lists of spiritual gifts provided in the Bible are not identical, but they vary in order and content. The biblical lists shown in connections are illustrative rather than exhaustive. And in other words, they illustrate what the scripture has to say, but they don't exhaust what the spirit can actually do in our lives. And that's important. How about 1 Peter chapter 4, 9 and 10? Be hospitable. The gift of hospitality. I can tell you right now that the Santa Clarita Seventh-day Adventist Church has shown me the gift of hospitality each time I have come here. So as a corporate congregation, I think you have that gift. Uh, be hospitable to one another without complaint, as each one has received a spirit special gift. Employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Ah, we still have some more. Let's turn the page. This is very good. Exodus chapter 31, 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all kinds of craftsmanship. Crafty. Ooh, to identify that gift in this church and make new communion goblets and new offering plates and, and nice banners. Oh man, alive. All right, now I'm gonna stop. Ah, so craftsmanship, crafty. How about 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 1 through 2? I urge then, first of all, that requests prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. So prayer, intercession, that's a gift. For kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. 
And then look at Psalm 150, 3 to 5. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. The gift of creative communication. Creative communication. Note, some churches would affirm other possible spiritual gifts, not described or mentioned in connection. Some of those spiritual gifts might include, but are not necessarily limited to, celibacy, counseling, <coughs> martyrdom. You heard the joke about that. You only get to use that gift once. <laughs> no, martyr is the biblical word for witness. Be a witness, right? Sometimes you witness by giving your life. But, and voluntary poverty. So some look at these gifts this way. All right. Are we going okay? Yeah. All right, so now directions. Read each characteristic a lot. This is what you're going to find on the next page. Match each characteristic with its corresponding spiritual gift. Write the letter of the characteristic in the blank under matches, which is in the spiritual gifts column. The characteristic for each spiritual gift is found in the same group as the spiritual gift itself. So let's turn to page, this is page 40. Man, we're on page 40 already. We moved, we moved good. All right, here it is. You ready? Group 1. Now, group 1 is page 40 and 41, so it can match up on either side of the page. I am going to read it, and I need you to tell me what it matches, and I'll tell you what it contributes to. Is that all right? So let's start with A. The divine ability to start and oversee the development of new churches or ministries. People with this gift pioneer and establish new ministries and churches, adapt themselves and core biblical principles to different surroundings by being culturally sensitive and aware, desire to minister to unreached people in other communities or countries, have responsibilities to oversee ministries and groups of churches, demonstrate authority and vision for the mission of the church. That characteristic matches with what gift? Apostleship. Apostleship. So put an A right under apostleship matches. And it contributes new ministries. Write that in that new ministry. That's what it contributes. Let me read B. The divine enablement to understand what makes an organization function, the special ability to plan and execute procedures and accomplish the goals of the ministry. People with this gift develop strategies or plans to reach identified goals, assist ministries to become more effective and efficient, create order out of organizational chaos, manage or coordinate a variety of responsibilities to accomplish a task, organize people, tasks, or events. This characteristic matches what? Administration. Administration. Put a B there. And that contributes efficiency. C, the divine enablement to communicate God's truth through a variety of art forms. People with this gift use the arts to communicate God's truth, develop and use artistic skills such as drama, writing, art, music, etc. Use variety and creativity to captivate people and cause them to consider Christ's message, challenge people's perspective of God through various forms of the arts, demonstrate fresh ways to express the Lord's ministry and message, this characteristic contributes to creative communication. creative communication. So C matches there. And this contributes artistic expression. Artistic expression. D, the divine enablement to creatively design and or construct items to be used for ministry. People with this gift work with wood, cloth, paint, metal, glass, and other raw materials. Make things which increase the effectiveness of others' ministries. Enjoy serving with their hands to meet tangible needs. Design and build tangible items and resources for ministry use. Work with different kinds of tools and are skilled with their hands. D matches 
What I'm missing something. What happened? We were just identifying a gift. Ah! You want to There you go. Praise God. And it contributes skills. Yeah. Yes. It contributes skills. Let's look at group two. Group two. Pastor Holmes, you want to read E for us? Certainly. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the not. divine enablement to present truth so as to strengthen, comfort, to help, to, or help to action those who are discouraged or wavering in their faith. People with this gift come to the side of those who are discouraged to strengthen and reassure them, challenge, comfort, or confront others to trust and hope in the promises of God. They help others change their behavior by applying biblical truth, motivate others to grow, emphasize God's promises, and encourage confidence in God's will. E matches encouragement. encouragement. And it contributes affirmation. It contributes affirmation. <coughs> E matches encouragement and it contributes affirmation. Let's look at F. The divine enablement to distinguish between truth and error, to discern the spirits, differentiating between good and evil, right and wrong. People with this gift distinguish truth from error, right from wrong, pure motives from impure, identify deception in others with accuracy and appropriateness, determine whether a testimony attributed to God is authentic, recognize inconsistencies in a teaching, prophetic message, or interpretation, are able to sense the presence of evil. F matches discernment, discernment and it contributes clarity. How about G? The divine enablement to act on God's promises with confidence and unwavering belief in God's ability to fulfill holy purposes. People with this gift believe the promises of God and inspire others to do the same. Act in complete confidence of God's ability to overcome obstacles. Demonstrate an attitude of trust in God's will and promises. Advance the cause of Christ because they go forward when others will not. Ask God for what is needed and trust the Lord for provisions. G matches what? Faith. Faith. And it contributes confidence. Age. The divine enablement to effectively communicate the gospel to unbelievers so they respond in faith and move toward discipleship. People with this gift communicate the message of the Bible with clarity and conviction. Seek out opportunities to talk to unbelievers about spiritual matters, challenge unbelievers to faith, and to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Adapt their presentation of the gospel to connect with the individual's needs. Seek opportunities to build relationships with unbelievers. H matches evangelism, and it contributes to the gospel. Group three, I, the divine enablement to accomplish practical and necessary tasks which free up support and meet the needs of others, people with this gift, serve behind the scenes wherever <coughs> needed to support the gifts and ministries of others, see the tangible and practical things to be done and enjoy doing them, sense God's purpose and pleasure in meeting everyday responsibilities, attach spiritual value to practical service, enjoy knowing that they are freeing up others to do what God has called them to do. I match it. Helps. 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 And it contributes support. Mm -hmm. How about Jade? The divine enablement to contribute money and resources to the work of the Lord with cheerfulness and liberality. It does not ask how much money do I need to give to God, but how much money do I need to live on? People with this gift manage their finances and limit their lifestyle in order to give as much of their resources as possible. 
support the work of ministry with sacrificial gifts to advance the kingdom, meet tangible needs that enable spiritual growth to occur, provide resources generously and cheerfully, trusting God for provisions, may have a special ability to make money so that they may use it to further God's work. Jane matches giving, and it contributes resources. How about cake? The divine enablement to care for people by providing <coughs> fellowship, food, and shelter. People with this gift provide an environment where people feel valued and cared for, meet new people, and help them to feel welcome, create a safe and comfortable setting where relationships can develop, seek ways to connect people together to, into meaningful relationships, set people at ease in unfamiliar surroundings. K matches. Awesome. And it contributes acceptance. L, the divine enablement to be God's means for restoring people to wholeness. People with this gift demonstrate the power of God being restored, bring restoration to the sick and disease, authenticate a message from God through healing. Use it as an opportunity to communicate a biblical truth to see God glorified. Pray, touch, or speak words that may at times miraculously bring healing to one's body. L matches. Yeah. Healing. And it contributes wholeness. Group four. L. The divine enablement to cast vision, motivate, and direct people to harmoniously accomplish the purposes of God. People with this gift provide direction for God's people or ministry, motivate others to perform to the best of their abilities, bring the, present the big, big picture for others to see, model the values of the ministry, take responsibility, and establish goals. M matches leadership, leadership and it contributes direction. In the divine enablement to consistently pray on behalf of and for others, seeing frequent and specific results, people with this gift feel compelled to earnestly pray on behalf of some one or some cause, have a daily awareness of the spiritual battles being waged, and pray, and are convinced God moves in direct response to prayer. Pray in response to the leading of the Spirit, whether they understand it or not. Exercise authority and power for the protection of others and the equipping of them to serve in matches, intercession. intercession, and it contributes protection. Oh, the divine enablement to make known to a group of believers the meaning of the message of another person speaking in a foreign language, people with this gift. Respond to a message spoken in tongues by giving an interpretation. Edify the body by interpreting a timely message from God. Understand and unlearn language and communicate that message to the body of Christ. O oh, matches. Interpretation. Interpretation. And it contributes understanding. P, the divine enablement to bring truth to the body through a biblical insight. People with this gift discover biblical truth which enables them to better serve the body, search the scriptures for insight, understanding, and truth, gain knowledge through spiritual studying, have unusual insight for understanding that serves the church, organize information for teaching and practical use. P matches, and it contributes awareness. Group five. Q, the divine enablement to nurture, care for, and guide people toward ongoing spiritual maturity and becoming like Christ. People with this gift take responsibility to nurture the whole person in their walk with God, provide guidance and oversight to a group of God's people, model with their life what it means to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus, establish trust and confidence through long-term relationships, Lead and protect those within their span of care. Matches, shepherding, shepherding, shepherding. and contributes. Where is shepherding, by the way? Yeah. Oh, nurture. 
It contributes nurture. Thank you. The divine enablement to us are the divine enablement to authenticate the ministry and message of Christ through unusual interventions which glorify God. People with this gift speak God's truth and may have it authenticated by an accompanying miracle. Express confidence in God's faithfulness and ability to manifest a presence. Bring the ministry and message of Jesus Christ with power. Claim Christ to be the source of miracles and glorify him. Represent Christ and through the gift point people to a relationship with him. Our matches miracle. and it contributes God's power. S, the divine enablement to reveal truth and proclaim it in a timely and relevant manner for understanding, correction, repentance, or edification. There may be immediate or future, future implications. People with this gift expose sin or deception in others for the purpose of reconciliation, speak a timely word from God causing conviction, repentance, and edification. See truth that others often fail to see and challenge them to respond. Warn of God's immediate or future judgment if there's no repentance. Understand God's heart and mind through experiences the Lord takes them through. S. Matches. Prophecy. And it contributes conviction. T. The divine enablement to cheerfully and practically help those who are suffering or are in need. For example, compassion moved to action. People with this gift focus upon alleviating the sources of pain or discomfort in suffering people, address the needs of the hurting, poor, and marginalized, express love, grace, and dignity to those facing hardships and crisis, serve in difficulty or unsightly circumstances and do so cheerfully, concern themselves with individual or social issues in which people are treated unjustly. Team matches. Mercy. If it contributes care. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, you, the divine enablement, as in Acts 2, to have the sudden ability to speak a known foreign language one has never taken the time to learn in order to facilitate the spread of the gospel to various language areas. On rare occasions, this gift has been repeated in recent times. People with this gift communicate a message given by God for a group of believers. Speak a language they have never learned and do not understand. You match it. Tongues. Tongues. And it contributes a message. B. The divine enablement to apply spiritual truth effectively to meet a need in a specific situation. People with this gift focus on the unseen consequences in determining the next steps to take. Receive an understanding of what is necessary to meet the needs of the body. Provide divinely given solutions in the midst of conflict and confusion. Hear the Spirit provide direction for God's best in a given situation. Apply spiritual truth in specific and practical ways. V matches wisdom, wisdom and contributes guidance. And last, double. The divine enablement to understand clearly, explain, and apply the word of God causing greater Christ-likeness in the lives of listeners. People with this gift communicate biblical truth that inspires greater obedience to the word, challenges listeners simply and practically with the truths of Scripture, present the whole counsel of, of God for maximum life change, give attention to detail and accuracy, Prepare thorough, extended times of study and reflection. W matches. Teaching and it contributes application. All right, folks, we're almost, we're almost at the home stretch. But before we get to the home stretch, I'm going to remind you that this doesn't finish until you take and neatly take out these pages and invite people over to do observation assessments, okay? All right, let's, before we do our spiritual gift assessment, which you're gonna now do individually and quietly on your own with your, with your own uh, pens, pens and pencil, look on page 52. Now, again, when, when Pastor Honus 
gives the big budget and you guys get the big package with the big video and with VHS that they probably have DVDs now. Um, I probably have the old VHS. Cassette. <laughs> You'll be able to watch a video and on that video, because the reason I, I'm serious when I say this, those of you who are taking this, someone we may discover has the gift of teaching and it will be a great opportunity for you to start providing connection seminars for those who are members who weren't able to be here today. This was an excellent turnout, by the way. But, but in doing it, you'll, you might want some aids, and those aids will have a video. And the video that people will see, look at the direction. As you watch this video, see if you can identify which spiritual gifts each character may have. And now we're watching the video. <laughs> Now the video's over. Write each spiritual gift you identify in the space provided. Write this down so you'll know it uh, when you start to lead out. Donna is one of the characters in the video. Write Donna's name. Donna. Donna. And then a dash. Guess what you're going to discover when you watch that video? Donna has the gift of leadership. So write that down next to Donna's name. <laughs> this is the quick and dirty, as they say. All right? Katie. Katie is another character. And Katie has the gift of hospitality slash mercy. So she has a gift cluster. Hospitality and mercy. Now, another character, his name is Larry. Larry has the gift of wisdom. Which one, mercy? Wisdom. 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 Yeah, Larry has the gift of wisdom. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this requires the gift of imagination. Yeah, exactly. This requires the gift of imagination, that's right. Uh, Sharon, Sharon is another character. Sharon has the gift of giving. Rod. Rod is another character. Rod has the gift of helps. <laughs> and so we've identified all the characters in the DVD uh, exhibit. Now, the true and final test of your spiritual gift is through the affirmation of the body of Christ. Now next week, we'll have you turn in your homework before you can continue the seminar with your observation assessments. But, this, we're coming to a close. So we're now at the very last part. Here are the directions, and you will do this individually. Respond to each statement on the spiritual gift assessment pages which follow. Three, if it is consistently and definitely true. Two, if most of the time or it is usually true. <coughs> One, if some of the time, or once in a while, and zero, if not at all, never. Now, use it. let me give you an example. So if you look at number one on page 55, I'm just going to, again, make myself vulnerable. I like to organize people, tasks, and events. I put... Two, and I put it under number one. And that means most of the time, usually true. Let me find something. Oh, how about this? Three. Let's look at three. I enjoy working creatively with wood, cloth, paints, metal, glass, or other materials. On number three, guess what I put? Not at all. Zero. Never. Zero. <laughs> My brother. Yes, indeed. Hey, I have to tell this just for some comic relief. My dad was a demolition contractor, 
in Lancaster, and my brothers and I, we would work with him from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. <laughs> so I love this poem I learned. This sun are hot, this hoe are heavy, this grass is further than I can reach, and as I looks at this cotton field, I think I must have been called to preach. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, anyway, so you'll put it, now make sure you put the, the number that you have read, put the number in the number. In other words, it goes across, not down, okay? Now watch this. Using the response sheet below, write the response to each statement in the block whose number corresponds to that number statement in the spiritual gift assessment. Photocopy grid if you like to make it easier to record your responses. We failed to do that. All right, three, important. Answer. I can get that in three minutes if you want it. Well, hey, ask Jill. <laughs> she wants us to move forward. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you, Greg. Because those are, some of you may need to do it by, your, otherwise you'll go back and forth, okay? Now, this is important. Answer according to who you are, not who you would like to be or think you ought to be. In other words, don't try to judge yourself who you ought to be or who you would like to be. Just answer according to who you are. That's the key to really maximize this part of the, of the uh, uh, assessment. All right? How true are these statements of you? What has been your experience? To what degree do these statements reflect your usual tendencies? So it's just give a true assessment about who you are. And remember, in the, in the uh, match them, make certain your response is in the right place. So the questions are going to go from 1 to 19 across and then 20 to 38 across. And when you get to the end, you are going to total the numbers by counting down each column. But you'll see that as you get to the end. At this point, just go through and answer 0 to 3 on the scale. All right? Any, any other questions or comments? All right, feel free to, to work, work at it. And I'm going to say it. Take your time, but hurry. <laughs> we do that here? No. That you do here. See, I'm, the reason you have to do that here is I'm showing you what you need to do with the observation assessment. If I let you all out of here right now, you'll start to... You'll go home and relax, and before long, you'll be Sabbath morning, you're supposed to be in Sabbath school, and you'll be finishing this, this spiritual gift assessment. So just <laughs> in the party. You have the exactly. gift of discernment, huh? <laughs> and Pastor Honus won't like that. <laughs> <laughs>